also later with everyone. So um, from the list, uh, it's not prioritized what I see uh, so far. So we don't have votes. So we would simply start from the beginning, I would say. Unless someone in the, in the group here has one specific topic that uh, she, he wants to, wants to put on top. I mean, um, Sawa or Brigitte, do you have anything specific that, is, uh, that, you, want to, that you want to discuss with us? No, I think going, going through the ideas uh, is fine. Okay. So the format we're using is Lean Coffee. I don't know if you know that. It's pretty simple. It's we put the topic up and we give it a timer. And when we say, well, it's uh, timer's up, then we discuss or decide quickly if it gets a little bit more time. And, and then the time is up and we move to the next one. So the first topic on, the, on this session would be uh, how to organize and run workshops. Um, and uh, to get started with the, with the topic, um, I set the timer of, uh, of four minutes. And um, yeah, the first question, of course, is uh, yeah, what's the problem behind um, running and setting up workshops in a, in a remote setup? What's different to normal? Who has experience with that? Like the problems that pop up when you have to do that remotely. If we don't have problems, then we can move on. Uh, I can, I can, I can maybe take that one because um, since 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 some time we're we're dealing with uh, how with the question how can we transfer actually the, the the offline workshops that we do into into an online format, we have been working together with with some partners on that, and we have some really really interesting learnings, um, especially about the topic of design sprints because we're we're doing design sprint training since uh, more than three years now together with the Design Sprint Academy, and. So um, I don't know if you're familiar with that format, but it's basically a design thinking project on steroids, which means within five days, you, you basically clarify what the direction is, you generate ideas, you build a prototype and you test it with, uh, with users and all this compromised in, in, in five days. And we were experimenting um, with uh, online tools um, to transfer this, this offline uh, workshop that is highly um, collaborative and interactive as well. And we found actually that as long as you have your learning goals clear and as long as you have a very, very well-structured workshop approach and a concept, um, it is actually not so much a question of if you are in the same room or not, because there is so much really, really good online tooling that you can prepare uh, or that you, that you can use to completely transfer this into online. Let me give you an example. For the, present, for the, um, for the preparation, for example, what we use is uh, we do Zoom calls like right now, which means we clarify what is there, uh, who, who will be the participants, um, what is there uh, as information, as research, how can we um, yeah, you know, gather this uh, data, then we use Google Drive to, to collect the data that is there already. Then we then create a, um, a design sprint brief, which is so to say, let's say the, um, the starting point of a, of a design sprint, which is also a Google doc. And then when we jump into this design sprint, first of all, we, we cut down the five days into uh, four days. And the second thing is that we, that we use a tool which is called Mural. I don't know if you have heard of it. Mural is a, is a pretty cool uh, tool actually designed for online and remote workshops. And it basically substitutes any kind of, let's say, surface or board that you would use within a physical room, right? So it could be, could be a whiteboard, could be a pinwall, could be whatever. And you can basically do anything in that. <clears throat> and this is what we use throughout the whole sprints. Um, it's highly collaborative. Um, you can do dot voting. You can post po um, post it on it or sticky notes. Do all kinds of like basically everything you do um, using canvases and all these things. Even uploading your own canvases is possible with that tool, and um, and that works actually pretty pretty fine for us. Do you even have some advantages? Is it free or do you have to buy it? No, yeah, there is a there is a free version. You get one uh, board for free just to play around with it and test it. You can invite mm -hmm. a couple of coworkers and just try it out. 
my suggestion would be just try uh, try with a little brainstorming exercise, for example, like um, mm -hmm. I don't know whatever question you have, just in, in, invite people and ask them to to contribute. Um, play around with the tools there are, for example, the sticky notes, the, the, there's even templates you could use, like, for example, the, the business model canvas is there, or if you need to do road mapping, if you need to do user story, all kind of product work that you need to do, you have templates, plus you can upload your own templates. Okay, so time's up for this one. Thank you. Um, is there in the group anyone who wants to know more about uh, setting up and running workshops remotely? Just a side note, there's another tool, it's called Miro. Um, so it's pretty similar to Miro, so you can check out um, both of them and um, pick one. Since we collected the topics from the people who joined, uh, who plan to join this uh, session, um, I, I would ask Brigitte um, and um, Sa Sarah, right? And Niels, if you had, I think, I don't know if you had put some questions on the true side um, We actually would prefer to work on yours than to work on any um, anonymous question. Sarah, do you have any questions for this group? Um, yes, yeah, so I think the question that I'd added, I have to look exactly how I worded it, um, just sort of, especially on like the personal level, um, I'm in a team where we were together every day, all day, <laughs> and now we're not together. And sort of, we just mm -hmm. had our, for example, our retro, and one of the biggest things was sort of the socializing aspect and just somehow keeping the team spirit up when we're all mm -hmm. separated. Um, okay. If you have any tips or okay. uh, so, tips on that. Good, then I would suggest we jump into this. So how to keep the, the team spirit or the, the now you are, when you move into the virtual or the online space, you lose body language, you lose um, being in the same room together, um, and how to, how to keep, keep the personal relationship and trust in the team. One of the main, main of, uh, topics that uh, we believe are happening when you move, um, move into remote. Um, so the first uh, comment or tip on this from uh, our side is arrange for um, informal get-togethers. So uh, don't don't only focus on um, on planned work and business-focused um, uh, interaction time online, but uh, also have some gamified or even just casual get together, like have breakfast, have your oat break breakfast together, or mm -hmm. um, have a dance party. Dance oh, party. Okay. Dance party. Um, play games together that are uh, available online. Um, have a have a work after work drink together. Yeah, while uh, anything that uh, fits in the in your team culture. Um, and another thing that you that we would recommend to do is um, keep keep a call uh, going the whole day. Uh, everyone has the mic uh, muted, and uh, if you want to talk, you can just press the unmute and talk to people. Mm -hmm. um, so this removes the boundary of that. When you want to meet, um, you have to set up a date or um, um, interrupt people. So you have, you have the feeling like, hey, I can just go over to the, next, to the desk and talk. Yep. Yeah. Um, so you, you, you can even call it the coffee break area or something like that so mm -hmm. that they know. Mm -hmm. Which Stefan said is, is really true. When you're, when you're working remotely, you're missing the body language and you're missing all of the senses really that we can't, you're not smelling the same things. You're, you're not sure you're seeing the same things or hearing the same things. So try to find little games that check in with different senses, you know? Yeah. We had the idea to start tomorrow with a, just sort of using the opportunity now that we're all at home with a show and tell mm -hmm. so that we have a topic for every day and show something sort of, Hey, what's your favorite book? Uh, what's your most embarrassing piece of clothing? What is the view out of your window? Things like that, just to sort of keep like that personal topic going without being in the same place. That was one thing that I wanted to recommend as well. Like what, what we um, kept doing um, 
back then was really just to talk about a random topic and not even planned. So one person would just start and then at one point it would actually um, start naturally, organically, yeah. that people would start telling. I like what you said, Sarah, that you share. I mean, you, you created a virtual space, which is now a connection all the homes of your, uh, of your teammates and uh, introduce each other to, the, to this environment. Yeah, I mean, Catherine always likes to show the cat. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so sh share something that is, uh, and this is also a very good uh, um, a tool to create trust. So you share something private Mm -hmm. um, that you normally would not do. So this is a, a core thing. So you would uh, you, you actually get more more intimate and and private because you are now connecting in the home. Yeah, yeah. has a downside because you uh, you have to work intruding your home, but um, that can uh, also be very useful for creating trust. Um, so the youth raising his hand. Yeah, I wanted to say basically what we do remotely is replicating what happens in an office. So whenever you set a meeting, like it's daily or retrospective or something, plan for like five to ten minutes of social time before you go into the details of the workshop or whatever you wanted to talk about. Just leave the space for people to arrive and have a chat and then you will have this coffee talk situations happening naturally. And Yeah, as, and what's adding to what uh, Stefan said, have some kind of, just pick a co-worker that used to sit close to you in your office and just have the video chat open to him or her all the time with mute. Mm -hmm. Then you can like throw random questions at, at him or her. That also works well. Yeah. Like I, I know the people that were sitting next to me in the office, so I try to have a, just a chat with them open, like a video chat to see like what they're working on. Some even put their cameras somewhere else. So I know they're, they are there and I could talk to them. That's, that's pretty valuable stuff. Because this gets lost. No? You have a meeting, oh, it's at 3 p.m., you jump into the meeting, ah, let's go to the agenda. No, just give some time for coffee talk. And, and then it's, uh, then you have a, and keep some, not, somehow this office spirit and water cooler talks that usually, usually are lost. That's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. One more thing in terms of water cooler uh, mode um, that, that um, can help sometimes as well. So you can set up a fixed link so if you don't want to have a dedicated screen, for example, that is always um, um, open um, or that's always opening a session, let's say, you can always you can also just create a fixed link to Hangouts or Zoom or whatever, put it somewhere, maybe on Slack or whichever tool you are using, uh, fix it there and then whoever wants to grab a coffee that's your coffee link you know mm -hmm. whoever in the company you can make like a little hand raise hey i'm getting a coffee who's in and then everybody who wants to just have a coffee for five minutes with other people just does into that one link for example that's yeah, also that's a good idea and i also pasted a link to um some online games that we used to play uh when we were distributed so uh, it's not for free, but it's pretty funny. So maybe um, that helps. Cool. Thanks. Thanks. So the, the item got two more extra minutes, but I think <laughs> uh, we could then move on. Unless, Sarah, you say you, you uh, would like to have, uh, you could get one more minute on it. Is there anything uh -huh. you, you uh, want to add or want, um, uh, would like to learn more about it? or Maybe one question on the other side, sort of the flip. Um, in the office, I often have a good feeling of, is the person busy? For example, they have their headphones on, they're really concentrated, or I see that they're in a discussion with someone. But when they're online, I feel like uh, being available, not 24-7, but at least from, we'll say, 9 to 5, I don't know if I'm writing to them, hey, I have a question, if I'm like mm -hmm. bringing them out of their flow, if there are any sort of like unbureaucratic ways of... Uh, yeah sort of I giving mean, that uh, visibility. Not only space, but also the time changes. So you, you can work a lot asynchronously, but you want to know when you are also available synchronously. So you have, yeah. this two, you have two concepts of time when you work remotely. And um, what you can do is, of course, use tools that show your availability status. What, for mm -hmm. example, Slack, Slack helps you uh, doing that. So there are many tools that simply show you're on or off. And the other thing is uh, be very clear with the calendar. So um, managing time together is becoming an issue. Uh, so you have to be really focused on, on time, shared time management. So 
maybe just have not a full day, but have just a few hours a day completely present where everyone can talk to each other. Yeah. One more tip on that. Um, it's, it's good that if like right now in the beginning where you have to, you know, uh, get to uh, get to norms on, on like how the team wants to work together, that you also discuss this in the team and set up something like a, um, like a, a rule set. Um, and there in this rule set, one thing could be things like um, if I don't want to be um, uh, disturbed, then I'll set my uh, messaging tool on mute. If you see me, I'm mute, then you don't even have to write to me or you can write me, but I won't answer and, and that's it. Um, it's, it's like a team read me. You yeah. can also set up personal read me's. Um, so if somebody has like very special way of working to communicate to the team, look, don't disturb me between this and that time because okay. I won't answer whatever. Okay. It's a good idea. Yes. One last thought regarding calendars. Uh, Stefan talked about it. Um, I set my calendar to default visible so everybody can see what I'm up to, like what kind of sessions, meetings I have planned, so how my day looks. I even put my lunch inside or when I'm doing like uh, work, work out or something. So this, this becomes much more important. I mean, the default for most companies, I can't see what, pe what people are up to. I see if they're available or busy but I don't see what the meeting is about. And this is quite powerful if it, you set this yeah. as a default. Uh, I mean, you can still have private things in there. You just set it to like, there's this privacy thing. that so then Stefan would only see that I'm busy, but not with what. And uh, because I can see people leaving the office, but I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. so, so this kind of thinking about how you work with calendars and your coworkers' calendars becomes quite quite a thing to think about. And I would I would advocate for default visibility that helps for me to also to understand how the, how your day looks um, without talking to you actually because then I can see oh it's back-to-back -back meetings maybe I shouldn't bother her now yeah that's a good idea and, and what Wisher said is really um, true right now many folks have just started working from home and there are no norms because all of a sudden they have their children at home too and they're watching kids and trying to do work so I just just give it a little time as well. Yep. Okay, so we, we got time for just one more of the topics. Um, and uh, I would suggest that, that uh, Sarah, Brigitte or Nils, you, you choose whatever you like. Um, I can, can read for you what we, what we have on the list. So discussion and decision making, and you just shout out what you think it's, it's something you would like to do. Discussion, decision meet, decision making, um, remote leadership, productivity tips, team collaboration, engagement, motivation, tools in general, um, any tools suggested to make meetings, meetings easier, um, how to keep up team spirit, I think that's what we discussed right now, and practical strategies, uh, measures to keep productive uh, working remotely. Anything that you want to jump on? Engagement, motivation comes to. Yeah, why not? Brigitte, what do you think? For me, it would be interesting how you manage discussions like we have now. So um, I have an idea now. You set the timer mm -hmm. and uh, the main topic I want to know because I have no experience is how long can you work during, I mean, you said uh, the, the time is different from being face-to-face uh, -face than working remote. So I heard that it's a lot more... Um, Uh, difficult to concentrate mm -hmm. and how okay. long can you normally um, work remote and okay. I just have to open the door in a minute <laughs> back so we have two though so it's engagement from Niels and then uh, discussion and decision making I think discussion and decision making uh, um, I would prefer to do first Psst. But we have to wait until Brigitte is there. Okay, sorry, I'm back. <laughs> no, no, sorry. Okay, so we, we start with discussion and decision making. Um, 
I think mainly the things apply that uh, also apply in, uh, in, in, in person work. But uh, many things actually get better when you combine it with digital um, that we do a lot. So when you have a discussion going on a topic uh, and prepare, um, we anyway would, we would recommend to use uh, simple tools like Tricider, but um, there may be, there, there's another one. I think, Brisha, you had one uh, today that we discussed where you can actually make up your, make up your um, backlog or, or um, have a conversation going on and prioritize um, topics. So engage on the, on the topic before you meet in person. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you mean Slido? Yes, exactly. Slido uh, or um, you use Slack just as a ch in a channel. You, you have a conversation going um, in an asynchronous way before you, uh, before you uh, meet them in person. And then when you want to implement decision-making that's more participative, uh, online tools can be super helpful. Like you have uh, voting mechanisms, you can have, uh, for example, uh, voting in, in mural on post-its that, uh, that is very powerful. Or mm -hmm. um, you can have like, like heat maps where uh, people can vote as many as they like. Mm -hmm. um, so not the, the formal dot voting, and so you have you have tools that support you in uh, new ways of making decisions in a very effective, uh, efficient way. Okay, I have to look for that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. So um, the the tools that we've talked about so far, I've put the the links in our chat window. Oh, great! Thank you. Sure. And we have a collection of the tools that uh, we we. Uh, we are using and uh, and found useful for the questions we found on the Tricido as a preparation for this meeting. Um, well, I mean, this is basically it. So you have actually a more powerful way of doing sharing knowledge and discussing and uh, discussing uh, multiple aspects of of a topic, because you can have face to face discussions too, like we have right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can have visual uh, work uh, going on with visual whiteboards and uh, post-its on mural, and um, you have decision-making support uh, with the tools that give you indications from uh, what people think would be would be choosing from options. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are other ways of uh, um, doing decisions, like um, inclusive decision-making protocol or um, having a role assigned, like a product owner who has the final word, which are the same if you have it online or in, in face-to-face. So there's yeah. not, not a difference there. Mm -hmm. Thanks. But maybe one more, one more thing to add. You will probably have to communicate more formally. You have to write more, mm -hmm. draw maybe more or... Mm -hmm. Do, do more to, to make your point because you uh, you're also very much in an asynchronous medium. Mm -hmm. I think what becomes also very important is um, uh, data management in general and documentation management. So the more asynchronous you are, um, the more important it is that people find the information easily. Mm -hmm. And that might require a structure and so on and so forth. But I, I mean, everybody starts just out, right? So this is, again, a topic that um, can be taken further with um, your teammates. And then, like, you can, you can set up structures while it's evolving. But it's important that you do have structures and that mm -hmm. everything is um, easily, um, but yeah, that everybody can find the things that they are mm -hmm. looking for easily. Okay, why don't we just switch to the next topic? Unless, Brigitte, you have something no, that you thank you. Thanks. Missing here. So um, I think Niels, you you pulled the uh, um, how to uh, the the engagement topic. So um, how to um, uh, how to keep the key team engaged while working from home, right? How to keep me engaged? <laughs> <laughs> It's challenging. Yeah, I mean, there's so much stuff to do. There's like PlayStation TV, bed. So that's, that's a challenge. Yes, that's definitely a challenge. Um, Distraction everywhere. 
Yep. Uh, attraction I'm, everywhere. Are you on a real regular exercise schedule? Like you have some exercise you do before you start, anything like that? What do you mean by exercise? Like, like sports. Running Gym. or <laughs> calisthenics. Not, really. Not really, but yeah, that helps, of course. Yeah. It definitely does. If my non-work day has a schedule, then it bleeds over into my work day having a schedule. Mm -hmm. So it helps if you know your boundaries, you know. Otherwise, they blend in. So, and my suggestion would be to put your non-work schedule in your daily calendar first before your work takes it all over. And, mm -hmm. then, it, and then it blends in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one thing I, I tried experimenting with was uh, using Pomodoro times, so like time boxes of 25 minutes to whatever, work on my emails, work on some concept, work on backlog stuff, uh, but keep it to this 25 minute time boxes and then taking breaks. But still, there's, I mean, the washing machine, you know, all these things that it's really hard to get them out, especially when you're, I mean, it's my living room, so. I do think, oh, sorry. Um, oh, I was just going to say, if you take the time and use very little sticky notes and make a little plan of your day before you even do anything, then then that helps as well. And I th I'd add that if you if or, or, or whenever we try too hard to not do the things that distract us, then we want to do them even more. <laughs> So therefore, so what works for me is actually um, to do the opposite to, well, actually, first of all, to have a ritual to start the day. So the way to work, we don't have this way to get to work anymore. So you need a different ritual to actually get started. But then also to um, uh, close the day to, to say, okay, now work is done. So you need a ritual to replace the commute from work to home which basically gives you the frame of when is working time. And then when it's working time, don't try too much not to do lazy stuff, let's say, if you want to, or if you need to put out the things into the washing machine or out of the washing machine, do that. But just make sure that you see it rather as those, you know, breaks that you do during work. So if you're a smoker, you would do a smoking break. If you are, not a smoker, you would maybe just stand up and, and walk a little. So see it something like as something like that. And once you stop forcing yourself from stopping doing that kind of things and actually embrace it and put it into your daily work, actually suddenly you start working. That happened to me at least. Mm -hmm. I'd like to add something. A couple of years I started journaling. Um, and there is a really, really cool uh, book, actually, I can, I can share with you. It's called uh, The Best Self Journal. And it helps you structuring the, the day. It's like first you get up and you start with being thankful for something. So wh what is it that I'm thankful for? And so on. And then you reflect your day. You, re you reflect the day before. And then you, you make some sort of a, of a structured plan of, of the upcoming day. Not to force yourself to follow that arbitrary plan, but rather to help you structuring, you know and then do minor changes with, within. So that's one thing I can definitely recommend because since I'm doing this uh, journaling, I, I have a very structured day and I somehow have much more fun in, in actually also reaching what, 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 I, what I try to reach. Goal setting is another thing. So um, what's, the, what's the goal for today? And I choose my two, three topics and then I break them down into smaller ones. Like, okay, so how can I break that goal down into smaller topics? And, and if you're a super freak, you even put KPIs on it. <laughs> I, I don't, but but you can definitely. So so that gives you some sort of feedback whether whether you 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 met you match your goals or not. Mm -hmm. and last thing, um, that's a that's that's a message to self actually is um, I don't know who ever invented that or thought that uh, an eight hour workday actually means that you can be productive for eight hours. You just cannot. Mm -hmm. There's tons of research that prove mm -hmm. that it is not possible for yeah. human beings to focus eight hours eight consecutive hours per day, even if you make a break, right? So don't be too hard with yourself. It's okay if you ever now and then think of something else, as long as you don't lose too much track of, of what you're doing, right? So 
too much gaming or too much, I don't know, Netflix or whatever, you will not reach your goals that you have set yourself, right? But don't be too hard to yourself. It's impossible to focus eight hours a day and, and just, you know, accept that it's not possible and rather try to match or set your goals that you can reach within, let's say, I don't know, a, a smaller percentage of these uh, eight hours per day. I heard Actually, it. Then... Oh. I, have, I have one thing to add to this. Um, pair up with people. So uh, this keeps you very much... Uh, very much uh, focus on on the topic but whenever uh whenever i i have something that i really want to want to get done um i hope that someone in in our team is jumping in and, ha and helping and, and we co co-create something that's just really uh uh just two not not three four five but just two people pairing on something that uh this this uh this uh, keeps you very much focused and not jumping to doing the dishes or whatever. And uh, as Philip said, don't do that for eight hours, do that maybe for five or six hours a day. So I think we are done with the time at least that was planned for this session. Um, so I think you were saying something. Did you have a, something to add? I just wanted to mention that even like those uh, principles that we that we use or those tricks that we that we use at work can even work for our own um, task management like um, like having your own daily stand up with yourself for example that's what what I also used to do like setting the goals of what I want to achieve today right but like really just for the week so when the week starts by the end of the week I want to have this and that done like achieve this and that but also per day in, like instead of um having like huge to-do lists that just getting longer um you know just saying like okay yesterday i really accomplished doing this and that and today i want to accomplish this and this and that and then you can you can always check the day uh, the next day if you really did that and if not then you probably know you've you've watched too much netflix you know mm -hmm. and you're like oh no Okay, folks, uh, time is up now for today. We wanted to close the, the round with, uh, with another checkout question, which is uh, either in a word or a sentence, let us know what you plan to do to finish the day after work. Since I brought it up, uh, I, I plan to, to have a look at what our Councillor Merkel is going to say in, uh, in a few minutes about the uh, Corona crisis. So uh, I will okay. finish okay. cooking then. <laughs> I started cooking before and I will finish cooking after that. Thank you. Um, I, I start cooking after that and I will uh, open a bottle of wine from South Tyrol that I had to leave one, one week ago, which <laughs> makes me sad, right? Uh, similar for me, I, I made pizza last night and I'll just have the pleasure of heating it up tonight. <laughs> Uh, for me, I hope to find a home for the cat that I found this morning. <laughs> oh, good luck. Thank you. For me, uh, I actually don't know. We just agreed with my with my boyfriend that we need something like a uh, closing day ceremony together and not just like apart from each other. So we will find something. Cool idea. Okay, then... Thanks everyone. So you get a you get a link to the video when we uh, when we process that with some uh, more info and uh, hope you liked it and hope you will come back. So we will probably run these sessions more more frequently, uh, but since we have some uh, cost, it will probably be not a not a free session anymore. But uh, always uh, invited uh, if you want to join us. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I will end now and say bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, bye. bye everyone.